and you listen to rock music or pop music is your self-worth is kind of measured by the money that you're making and the things that you have and the supermodels you've been with and, and things like that rather than how much that you've grown as a person and, and your character <sighs> that you've grown into you know mm -hmm. but the crazy thing is like this this has been like put on the spotlight for now quite a few years absolutely and it still is the way it goes yeah. it's nothing and it new. still is yeah this is not nothing is changing right. like we are all we're all complaining about how how lame it all is right and yet there's still clearly a, a gigantic majority of a mass of people yeah that still right, just right. prefer it yeah. right <laughs> just, to just blindly yeah. just prefer it because it works right and it's just just mental man it's just yeah, mental. it really is it really is so you just you just start to realize that the older that you get and the more that you learn you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah Let's, let's talk about some of those songs too because the song i wanted to talk about is one i didn't cover yet but i put it on the monthly playlist for this month along with oh, another song you, that i checked out the song dogs make the best mountaineers mm -hmm. i wanted to find out a little bit about that one because let, let me actually just let you guys explain it before i even try to break anything down let me hear it from you explain like that, that that song kind of what it's about um, Tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> all, all, all of my uh, answers to these questions are, are cleverly constructed uh, total lies about what the song's are about. Um, it's, this this one is really about um, uh, the the uh, the memories and uh, places in your head that you go into. There may be shared places or, or individual places, um, uh, and it's it's kind of a song which is like um, trying trying to um, take these out of the abstract realm and kind of make them a bit more physical. I don't know if that is a very clear explanation of mm -hmm. the song. That's, that's that that's part of uh, that's sort of the underlying. Uh, thing that we're trying to do with the song but but then also it was an attempt to write writing something that was like more uplifting uh, right. because a lot of our songs kind of lean toward the uh bleak, bleak. The, the more bleak uh, <laughs> side of things and the, yeah. and, and the darker take on things so this was also an attempt at uh trying to draw a lot of lightness out of those uh, mental spaces right. it was uh, it was an experiment we did uh i mean you had the, the lyrics before the, the yeah, music came along yeah but it was an experiment that we did as and like like he just said like trying to do something that's a bit more lightheaded but at the same time we tried to do that with music and the musical end or the musical side of it too right uh just try to make more of a pop pop e song right with you know the structures you know, fairly diatonic chord progressions that are very resolvable. Right. Um, and and we literally set out to do like to do that. And uh, and to be fair, we, we're quite quite happy with the results. Well, we actually wrote it really quickly. And it came out, yeah, it came about really mind. quickly too. Um, we were all just sitting around the living room. Well, it, it was funny. That picking yeah, yeah, it was and funny. I was just sort of trying to fit the lyrics in and they sort of Again, like sometimes it happens, they fit in quite nicely. Dude, but the story of it is, 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 is amazing because that, I, I remember we met that day, right? To figure out what were the, what the next recording was going to be because we were a bit confused what we we're going to do, right? We had the album and then we we're like, all right, so we're going to have, we're going to do three more songs or five more songs or whatever. And then we're going to get to the album. And we're like, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, sure. Great. Yeah. All right. And then I start playing on um, just, I had the, the guitar was lying around. I just literally start playing G down to E minor, like the most simplest thing that the brain can, <laughs> can fart, you know? And then Andy just goes like, Hey, dude, uh, how about you try these lyrics? That's and then awesome. he jumped on the lyrics and then we started to repeat that. And in literally about 15 minutes, he was like, Oh, all right. Well, we, this could work. And then all of the planning that we literally just met to to arrange. It literally just vanished, and then we just did that song, and then we put it out. And uh, I think uh, I don't know what. It's what... going to be our lead single and our EP coming out. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was it. Was funny. It was funny that it, that it just it just came out so sporadically, you know. Yeah, right. it was very spontaneous. That song. Spontaneous. It was very spontaneous. That's um, awesome. 
What did you guys do to get that kind of a sound? Because something I I have commented on, I noticed that not all the songs are like this, but quite a few of them are. They're pretty much devoid of any percussion, yet it still somehow mm. it has like that beat behind it. So it's I still got of, like this momentum to it, right? Well, this right. particular song though is the first one where we actually actually added an actual pretty solid percussion element, which in this mm -hmm. case is, is the snare. Right. Because uh, before that, I mean, we had a, a rock period where, I, you know, we were a rock band. I was in the drums and stuff, but, let, let, you know, let's not let's not talk about that. <laughs> uh, um, then we started recording more folky, more folky music. And then we pretty much went, you know, all the way. We stripped everything down to guitars, bass, keys and vocals. And we started, uh, we started writing like that and recording like this. And it wasn't until Suburban Ghost, precisely, that I kind of went a bit experimental with, mm -hmm. I started to experiment with a bit of percussion here and there. And um, I think that was the song that we, we thought, maybe, maybe, maybe a bit of percussion, maybe a bit of percussion. And then I think that EP doesn't really have much more percussion than that, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. And then for this other one, uh, well, Andy had this song in mind from, which is the theme tune from a, a, a oh, TV yeah. show called The Detectorist. Yeah, yeah, the song is. Oh, the song is called The Detectorist Theme. Like, mm -hmm. if you're if if you're interested, like, just YouTube Detectorist Theme. This, this was a song that we sort of, or that, that I had in my head and I shared with Santi and probably the other guys as well. Which I, I felt had, um, like like the right sort of atmosphere okay. for what we were trying to do with dogs, um, and and that has a similar kind of it had a kind of like similar snare roll, mm -hmm. and we were trying to see if we could like make it work. And interestingly, we did a first version of of dogs, what you know what could be considered as a demo. We did it, and it was uh, it was a different key, and it was a lot slower. And because we did it because of this, because of the tempo of that, the snare roll, I remember trying it and it's just, it was too slow and it just kind of didn't hold itself together. Okay. And we, and for that version, we, we, it just didn't work. So we, we put out the, the version like that. Uh, we had a, uh, a blog, uh, uh, a magazine, uh, local to, to hear. Um, they were asking for like demos and stuff for like a, a it was, it was a uh, winter, Christmas. it was like Christmas, yeah. Christmas playlist. Hmm. And we submitted it. We were we were very happy with it. But then, I think we all we were all pretty pretty sure we were just gonna have to work it out. Like just okay, that was a good demo. But let's let's try to see if we can like just arrange it better, more solidly. We asked a few friends around mm -hmm. for for their opinions and feedback. We made it. We sped it up just enough mm -hmm. that when I got back to doing the snare again, it actually worked. And it was wow. it was quite it was quite a relief because we we you know. It, it, I mean, I don't want to say that we 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 recorded that song or we wrote that song to try to fade a snare, but you know, right. it was one of the main things we wanted to kind of see if we could achieve. Mm -hmm. And I think we we managed to to we managed right. to get it. It's a nice role, you know. It's, it gets yeah, it gets a nice. And I, I remember thinking like it doesn't have a lot of accents, and I remember discussing this, <laughs> and I just I feel like it doesn't have a lot of accents, but then it's just a nice rhythm element in the back that just kind of gets it going it elevates the song yeah it's very in the back it's the subtle song, yeah. but it's there and if you remove it it's definitely gone so right yeah it's crazy you know and that's one thing i'm, I'm very I'm, I, I'm, I am appreciating a lot of the way we are we've approached music in the last mm -hmm. couple of years which is we're starting from bare like bare like mm, bare bones kind of tunes and arrangements and we're, we're starting to like make them more complicated. Well, not, not complicated, but just more elaborate, more right. layers to it. And, and we we yeah, get I'm to explore to different place. new things. And and, and it's, it's really a fascinating pro uh, pro process, you know? So, yeah. Was, was so nice what song. did you think um, Dogs Make the Best Mountain Ears was about? What what what, what did the, the song, in all its parts, sort of uh, create for you? I was kind of honestly thinking of it more like, and in almost um literal sense because i was almost thinking of it like in that idea of the saying dogs are the man's best friend and i was almost kind of thinking of it in that way just how like you see dogs i love dogs like they're free-spirited yeah. mm -hmm. they just dogs. you know like that's kind of what, what it kind of put me in the mind of yeah yeah, well, I mean, uh, to go back on my previous answer a bit that was obnoxiously wordy, really it was just about, um, 
It was just about trying to put together a bunch of shit that would make uh, a friend smile. You know, that, right. that's really what, what, what it was trying to do. And then, like, there's things that underlie that, but fundamentally, that's that's what it was. Right. That's and, and and I think like that that seems to uh, resound like quite cleanly with people. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed that song. Like, honestly, I know that one is the more poppy song, but when I was listening to it, I'm like, I really wish I would have reviewed that one for the Artist Discovery <laughs> series because last year that would have been the number one. Like, seriously, like, it's Drama, it's man. perfect. Yeah. Like, it's it's something that if people were to listen to it, they would really like it. It's something that it's it's a good kind of gateway drug into the rest of you guys music because it has some elements of what i hear in the rest of you guys Mm -hmm. stuff Mm -hmm. but it's something that someone that has never heard of you guys would be like oh this is really nice i would like to hear some more like it so i just thought that that song is perfect it accomplishes that thank you man uh, that's that's definitely one because something that we're trying to do for 2022 we're trying to actually feed some of these songs to some local radio stations here that's what i'm gonna try to feed to them that's a good contender man well and that's a great idea received for us as well we've been very fortunate uh we've got a lot of love for that one and goes down well live was your your friend that did the strings for us oh Um, yeah we had a yeah my friend you know we kind of took the song up a level to have someone to collaborate with doing strings definitely takes that song to another level and definitely i think helps people kind of have that kind of reaction with that song yeah now how do you guys record? Do you guys record at home or do you go to a studio? You're right here, man. Studio, oh, wow. Now that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have thought that. <laughs> Seriously. Like, your stuff sounds just so, like, so clean and pristine. Like, I, I figured you guys were like, might have been going yeah, to man. a studio to do that. Nah, man, we, uh, can't, we can't afford studios. No, <laughs> no. I, I wish I could just take the, 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 the screen and just, just you know put it like this because because you, you know <laughs> right here is this this is, a is a bed behind us i mean the thing is you know we've got this uh i don't know if you noticed the uh the eps the last two eps that we've released they're literally called there's a series of volumes mm-hmm. and they're literally called bedroom singles um, makes sense that yeah makes that's, sense, that's, that's, I didn't even that's think literally about it that. because we literally just i mean it's I, lit- I've, I've, I moved here probably about six months ago. So the last bit of recording we've done here, but before that, we've done some recording at your house in in his bedroom, wow. and then it all originated in his bedroom. Right, that's where we started. So it, you know, I I know there's like a whole genre called like bedroom, um, a bedroom, what is it? Pop, bedroom, bedroom low, low, yeah, yeah low, low fi fi. or something like that. We we just we you know it's that's it's just honest like we're right. not trying to hide anything we're not this is exactly what it is we just right. record it in the bedroom so I feel like it's a really nice way to just right. be like we're not pretending to be anything else if you want to think it yeah <laughs> I mean it's, it's but, very close and authentic and um, like personal but way you know yeah recording. so I, I basically have uh, acquired I did study recording okay uh, production. Uh, and I've over, over the years have acquired some 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 gear okay. and some microphones. I've got a nice uh, Valve mic preamp, nice. which gives a bit of tone, a bit of right. added you know quality to the recordings. I mean, I don't think it's the best preamp to be honest, but it's just something a bit more, uh, something a bit different, you know, than right. the usual interface. Right. And I think that that might, I think that that is. That is helping it just be a, just just a step above right. just being an absolute demo. <laughs> right. It sounds really good. So yeah. so you actually you kind of handle the production and the mixing that kind of aspect yeah. of it. This guy. Wow. This guy. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. It's amazing. only here. It's only here. Yeah. That's awesome. No, well, you know, it's it's a, it's a it's a fun it's a fun process. But it's also a very torturous and yeah, bad well, process. And, and like stressful sometimes right. because you're trying. You know, because you're trying, you're essentially competing with acts that have access to this amazing stuff. And ideally, you want to be up on a playlist. Like for us, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. if we're on a playlist with like Lankham or Aldous Harbin, but those songs are mastered and mixed like next They're level. recorded right. with like amazing, qual- like amazing right. quality equipment. And it's just every everything involved in the recording and the, and the mixing and everything of that. It's just, right. there's so much to it. There's yeah, so much meat yeah. to the right. fucking recording. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's been times where we've had to like, uh, you're probably better to explain this, but um, I think this was with dogs as well. We were working on dogs and we realized when we listened to someone else's work 
we were happy with what we'd done basically but we realized like this is nowhere near loud enough like yeah. when okay. you put it next to any other artist Absolutely. our song's way quieter right. and that was like that was a stress but was what, like, was, what yeah. was is it was the beginning the, be, the intro of the mm -hmm. song was was quiet as it built it, it, right. it gradually got louder but but just the intro because how, because of the way i was approaching mixing back, right. back, back then uh it meant that um i was living basically technical speech but i was living too much headroom right. which meant that uh when the song peaked you know it when when it was like thick and fat right. um it was nice and loud and energetic but at the beginning like it was it was not it was not it was not not really not really loud not really present right and i listened to this other music and i and like the guitar was like basically inside my brain yeah and i was like <laughs> i was like why is the why like we've got a song where the intro is a, a guitar finger picking part why why is it so low like what am i doing wrong here <laughs> and that was a bit of a cathartic moment a bit of a crisis right. uh, <laughs> But um, a week after we released Dogs, in a way, just to sort of like compose ourselves. <laughs> from the disaster yeah, that was that was that was uh, yeah. oof, that was an intense part. It's like to set the scene. It's like we're we've just done this song. We're really happy with it and excited. And in theory, it's like cool. We just gotta get this out. And then we come round one day and something's like, yeah, this is like this doesn't work at all. It's like, why is it quiet? <laughs> and it's like, oh, what? Why? Why is it even quiet? Yeah. I, don't, I don't get it. Like, but then that that was the problem because like these guys. Sorry guys. No, it's fine. But these guys just didn't get it. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. This no, totally so for me to yeah. for me to explain what was going on, it was such a mental effort to like how can I just put it in words they'll right. just understand. Yeah, yeah well, I think that was Alex. perfect. Yeah, because like I for this channel, people know that that's what my background was was music production. I do a lot of mixing and things nice. like that. Um the only thing that's my thing now. 99.9% .9 of my experience was all rap music. So it's a totally different animal because it's purposely loud, in your face, mm. distorted. You know, it, it's supposed to sound yeah. dirty and kind of grimy and mm. especially for underground stuff that I'm doing. So now that I'm kind mm, of learning how sure. to do more pop and learn how to do the kind of music that my band plays for our things, I'm having to kind of get more practice at it. And I've, I've gotten better at it now that I've gotten more into practice of doing more of that. But yeah, definitely, I think that's a perfect way of explaining that, like leaving too much headroom. I know exactly what you meant. Yeah. Because yeah. it's usually a good thing to do that. Um, well, because the then, because then what, what's going to happen in mastering? If you literally don't have exactly. any headroom, then when you get to mastering, there's nothing going to be, you're not going to be able right. to push anything. So it's just exactly. going to be overcooked. Anyway. I think the thing too that I've learned to kind of explain it maybe to in layman's terms as well with the headroom the reason why it's a good thing I kind of got your point with that because it's kind of a balancing act especially as I'm learning now especially with the vocals from one of the singles that we released I'm actually going to just do a Kanye West and take it down oh, and put it back up <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> because I just the vocals were loud like yeah. they were rap vocals so it's like the singing is shouting over the instrumental and i'm like you're you don't need it that loud especially if you listen mm -hmm. to billy eilish like you can barely hear what she's saying sometimes i'm like it doesn't need to be that right. loud so the oh, point that i was going to make though of like the balancing yeah. act there that i've kind of learned with dynamics that i'm sure you kind of see too you kind of i think of it more the dynamics that you're leaving especially for pop is more in between each individual sound than it is overall so like for example mm -hmm. when drums come in or when a guitar is being strummed you're hearing that hit and then the decay is kind of the way that i always think of it now as i'm learning how to do more of like pop friendly things yeah pop is pop is a crazy genre because it like the the thing with pop music is it's supposed to be easy and digestible right but and you would imagine that writing a melody or an arrangement or writing a harmony that is simple and to the point would be easy because all you right. have to do is just write the easy progressions. Right. But then as soon as you start doing it, you start to realize that it's like, hold on a second. Like, I, it actually isn't easy because they mention that. <laughs> it, it, has, it has to be, t to begin with, it has to be tasteful. You have to, it, you know, you don't just play the threes, you know, one, right. five, one, five, four or one, four, five. And you have to, you have to, it has to be, there has to be taste in there. Right. And then the melodies around it have to be tasteful. They have to yeah. be enough subtlety to it because otherwise it's just boring. Yeah. So it's like the thing with pop music is there's such a, there's such a fine line between 
it's right. just straight up boring right or it's like it's it's cool it's great it's got a right. lot of character i think that's no, what the key I'll, is I'll too you, with pop music it's nuance that's yeah. what it is it's nuance you know <laughs> that's what it is, and, like. and, and, but that, that's how you present yourself you know that's how exactly. you that's how you that's your that's your stump you know so you you, right. you want those things right that's why generic music is just it's pretty bland because this, right. there's none of that you know right there's none of that yeah believe so. me like with the artist discovery series like i'm always saying that because that's what i'm hearing like with people that i'm like it's just average it doesn't really stand out like kind of like yeah. i think what, what you guys are doing it stands out because it's different so like i think that's just like the biggest thing just be yourself and yeah. be a different personality with what you're hearing <laughs> i think we might be we might be uh we might be sinning a little bit with a bit too much originality with our music <laughs> but but you know nonetheless we we managed to come you know hopefully come across as you know you know genuine and and original right and yeah i, I think one of the weird things about <laughs> what we do is how because like truthfully it's not it's not particularly uh different to a lot of stuff right um and and our uh influences are on our sleeves some of the time uh, and yet i mean obviously this is the point of view from someone inside the band but uh it still seems to be it, it re results in something that's quite dynamic and unusual especially compared to a, l a lot of the other stuff that um is sort of around and about uh so i think you can get originality from really simple things you know like just your yeah. personality filters whatever you come across mm -hmm. into something new so. but sometimes Absolutely. that's where the talent resides you know you, you can you can just naturally write something that is simple right you don't have to think about it too much and yet mm -hmm. it's got all the character because either you've sung onto it and you have a lovely voice or a nice peculiar way about melodies or singing and sometimes some people just have that you know and, right. and fair play but like Absolutely. i started writing a, a, a tune with a friend of mine and and it, we, you know we want to approach more of a popular sound, and 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 honestly, I, I'm I'm struggling to just not write something that is not weird. It's like, <laughs> damn it, amen. I can totally relate weird. to that. <laughs> That's the funniest thing. Like my first album ever with my band, which I actually scrubbed its existence from the internet just because <laughs> I had to come back down because i like i told you i'm avant-garde i studied that kind of music i enjoy that stuff so i just went balls to the wall crazy with it with different sounds but there would oh, be yeah. like moments <laughs> of it being normal and people enjoying it and then in be that came in between <laughs> craziness so this album that my band is working on now is probably five six years in the making at this point because it's songs oh, that were from that original one that have been refined and it, have a more mature sound as well as new things we could. i can relate to that i kind of had to dumb things down a bit and it's because i kind of matured and realized i don't need to do all of that you know <laughs> so i think sometimes I it's just finding your voice you know and sometimes yeah. you have to shout for a while before you learn yeah. how to speak mm -hmm. Fair play, man. Yeah, I hear that. so now let's talk a little bit too so i'm gonna start winding things down so i know i went way over I, I kind of do want to talk to you know you guys some instrumentalists here so i want to talk a little bit about that aspect of it kind of what makes would you guys say the bandit sound like what are some of the things that you guys kind of do playing wise that you say makes you guys sound okay, that's a good question <laughs> you two guys should should leave this one i feel like <laughs> yeah i mean what makes what makes it well what do we do? Yeah. What do we do? <laughs> well, okay, so seeing as these guys are struggling to explain their songwriting process, oh, I think we have Tom. Come, man. I was literally just gonna say, I was just gonna say, with all due respect, like Tom adds so much like atmosphere and stuff around because, like, the thing is, we, we will be making we, up, we, and yeah, you know, going through the phase where Andy was bringing up briefly disregarding that we were a rock band, Tom, we had so many great songs where Tom was writing some crazy electric keys and stuff like that, oh, yeah. and and we're still um, not hiding from Tom's crazy jazz abilities, really. I um, think I think the way it is is like we provide. Sorry, Alex. Yeah, good. We good. we, we provide like Alex and I provide like chord progressions. I mean, you've right. written some too, mm -hmm. but usually it's Alex and I provide chord progressions, and you know we we take it in. We usually write parts that are not you know not extremely elaborate. You know, sparse arrangements. We yeah. usually go for. 
And then Tom just comes in <laughs> and then and then just just lays his fingers on, on the keys, you know, and does that's amazing. And does something and that just yeah. elevates it and keeps yeah. it's like that sweet sugar, you know. It weirds me out a little bit because like the keyboard players, I don't know, they usually dominate the conversation, but I don't really feel like we've heard a lot from you yet. Uh, <laughs> these guys are these guys are loud as fuck. I let them have their <laughs> Yeah, the keyboard player of my band, because we, we're gonna yeah. probably sometime through the summer have our own artist feature thing uh, once nice. our stuff comes out. He doesn't stop. The other guy that I featured before too, John Rizzo, another guy, he played the keys for a song that I'm gonna release as a single called Ready to Go. He's the same way, like he will go and go. So like <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Like I, I when I hear about other piano players, I know a couple that are quite um are quiet, but yeah. there's a few that they, they, they have they have reputations like drummers, they're like thrown out of bands for being <laughs> weird and it's like I, th- I I can only imagine because yeah. people players don't have the rock and roll like reputation that maybe they're acting up. <laughs> but like for me I'm like I'm quite happy to sort of just sit here quietly and, and see <laughs> see what goes on around me. That's that's how I usually do yeah, it. Yeah, just sit back and I observe. guess I kinda that's how I approach the music as well, because I sit back and listen around like it's been a process over the years because I've uh, learning jazz I've had to I've had to sort of strip back what works and what doesn't and really analyze um dynamics and things where i never used to do that i always say analyze i'd, I'd go into a session and listen right. really um so that's really where it comes in and listen to certain um be um emphasis is here and there and changes in progressions and just where little bits and pieces can fit in um i think i don't because you were saying that you, you does your band play a bit of jazz or, or blues or something like that my band is interesting because it's had a lot of it's it's had a lot of it's had a lot of uh um evolutions over the years like Mm -hmm. my individual artist feature kind of for me as a producer i talk about it when we when we do ours eventually this summer you'll learn the history because we kind of my background was jazz and when we started that band Mm -hmm. that's what why that first album was very experimental we were like an experimental Mm -hmm jazz fusion band that has some elements of jazz elements of hip-hop and elements of rock all that kind of awesome. melded that together great. so that's something kind that, of, uh, that that's something that education does it puts you it make, makes you listen to all this really high right. level almost highbrow stuff right and then it goes that's what we expect and then that's how your brain works because you're right. learning and you're you're intrigued by it but then like you said you have to look at it it takes a few years to go Okay, yes. how can I how can I make this a little bit different, like a right. bit more? I don't want to say the word, but like accessible. Because right. Some of it can just be oh, that's my favorite word, accessible. Accessible, <laughs> I know, right? And um, yeah, no, there's a limit, but for, like, in a way, I I've had to change the language I in, right. I play in um, over the years and adapt it. And I think I definitely we get a nice for me being in this band. I've definitely improved as a musician overall like, right. to be able to probably play on things that i never would have like been looking to play on 10 years ago i feel right. like so i would say yeah, definitely it's true you know because i feel like you you're absolutely correct how you kind of get refinement i think that playing the keys mm-hmm. that definitely is important because i picked up on that too how you serve the song and i think that's the most important thing to realize like when you get to the point that you can really have fun just playing something simple and be able to put that nuance to it that's yeah. like we really know that you've matured because that's how i was that was my background too is i was a big band player that started <laughs> his own band later on you know nice. so, oh, wow. so that was the thing like when i realized i could have fun just playing a sustained note that's mm-hmm. part of a chord that was like that, yeah, that is that, yeah I, I think yeah. every musician has this this moment of like of truth when you realize that it's Hold on a second, like playing a very complicated line right. is not, well, to begin with, that's not the hardest thing. The hardest thing is to actually hold A notes. Yes. Mm. And like, well, it, I, I can imagine in brass instruments, that is just it's hard. Yeah. I, I've, got, I've got a sax, I play a bit of sax, and just to hold A note and not, and to for it not to go detune, it's, it's, it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. So, I mean, as, as a, a trombone player, I can imagine that. Right. It's, it's it's a pretty solid skill to have, right. yeah. but yeah, absolutely, man. I remember one time uh, I was in. Um, I, I brought this uh, saxophone precisely, and I went mm-hmm. to uh, 
do some busking in London. Okay. And I went, I went by by the Thames, and there's a few there's a few um, tunnels along alongside uh, the, the river. Right. And I remember just trying to th- look for a spot and thinking, what you know, what could be a nice spot to be like playing. And I, as, as I walked past a tunnel, I just thought, you know what? Inside this tunnel could actually be a pretty sweet spot to be playing. You know. <laughs> yes. But for for the acoustics. Yeah, and I, I remember play just thinking. Too. Yeah, man. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I just remember I, I did not prepare any piece at all. I was literally just gonna just see what, what came out. Yes. And I, I remember literally just playing a note for like a minute and a half. And just this guy coming past and just looking at me like, You, man. <laughs> yes. You don't really know what you're doing. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> it's only, exactly. It was sounding great, man. It was sounding great. But yeah, uh, but yeah, just just the simplicity of playing one right. one note and just holding it, man. Right. Yeah, I think we're lucky. The because uh, instruments like the keys or instruments like, in a way, the guitar it has a set tone, right? Right. But there's other instruments like uh, I don't know about like violins and and strings like that. But instruments like wind instruments, you have to have the tenacity to pro- produce the tone. And like singing, right. singing is the same. Yeah, you want to just say that, yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 a real challenge. It's a real right. challenge. And we especially almost, when you record it. We almost yeah. made a, a huge cheesy error in dogs, actually. Dogs oh. make the best matinees. Um, where the line comes in, I think it's in the second. So they're drifting out to sea. Yeah, yeah. And we were going <laughs> drifting out to sea, and we were like weirdly tempted for a while to just sing like a kind of Nickelback style repeated. <laughs> drifting out to sea, drifting out to sea, mm. which is just amazing because it's not in there. Um, it's horrendous now looking back. Um, but we did, we did guiltily put in the melody line of that on a guitar. So like you have drifting out to sea. Do, 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 do. And now, like sometimes when we play it live, I personally like oh, I miss that little melody. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, which is another tasteful way to do it rather than nickel backing it up. Yeah. <laughs> that was good though too. I know you don't want to talk about it, but I want to, I do I do because I thought it was really really good. Kind of the rock band era. So like the song, I've looked at it like three times. I keep forgetting the name. Kings. Oh. King's culture. King's culture. Oh, yeah. oh yes. my! You've really yeah. <laughs> into the hanging down this back catalog there. I funny. I actually <laughs> really like that song, and I <laughs> like the the keys on it. In fact, it kind of well, I was gonna say it mm. kind of reminded me of the Clash a little bit. Yeah. Oh, thank so you. I, I kind of yeah. really liked it. You know, like I yeah, thought man. that was really good. That's probably one of them on the playlist just because I liked it so much. I think other people would okay. enjoy that one too. So straight yeah. up, man. So I guess what I would say too, kind of where I was going with that, kind of the, the idea of evolution, because I kind of shared a little bit about yeah. how my band had an evolution where we started one place and we had to refine it and mature mm-hmm. into our sound. Kind of what was, I, I kind of like maybe let you briefly like give me the journey of that, how it is that you guys kind of went from that sound and what kind of was the thought process, the reason why you ended up like the more folk, more stripped down sound. It's a, it's a fascinating story, I tell you. I think um, the, the short version of it really is that, um, you know, we've been doing the kind of indie rock band thing for a while mm-hmm. with Santi on drums. We had probably, what, 10, 10-ish Yeah, we had songs a that we were playing re- regularly um, that we'd written, original songs. Then uh, it was Christmas 2018, maybe? 2018, yeah. Yeah. Um, and me and Santi just, uh, we had a little bit more time. So we we kind of picked up acoustic guitars and I had a, a, a big set of lyrics and we just uh, started diving into that. Um, and then these two guys got more involved where initially it was kind of a side project. And then through doing that, because the project me and Santi started was, was essentially a kind of folk project. Through doing that, we realized uh, kind of how satisfying it was to do folk music. And then this, this coincided with another thing, which was we played uh, a, a folk festival in Wales. Oh, okay. And we saw a few bands. And, uh, you know, usually we, we bring an uh, electric setup, but for this festival, we were doing an acoustic set. And obviously, we, we saw a bunch of bands play. And we realized that y- you can really achieve the same sort of energy um, if you're a really good folk band. 
um, with acoustic instrumentation. Uh, it's not the exact same thing, but the, the, the core energy is fundamentally the same. And, and so then it was like, well, it's, it's pretty awkward bringing amps about and it's really expensive paying for rehearsal time for a whole band multiple times a week. We could just do this acoustically. And uh, and so we, we basically started so doing the, that. So the, the, the aspect of <clears throat> not having a drum kit and needing a rehearsal space to play the drum kit meant that we didn't have to wow. use rehearsal spaces anymore because here in the UK, you know, it, they're just ridiculous how expensive this this is. And wow. I, I don't know, unless you've got a friend or something. In Spain, the way it works is, especially if you're a band and, you know, you've got your local rehearsal space, you, you usually, you have, you pay for your own room mm -hmm. and you basically pay a monthly fee and then you can, it's your room. Oh, it's, wow. You've got all your equipment there. You can literally pimp it up the way you want it and it's your room That's and nice. it's cheap it's like mm -hmm. 50 quid a month but like you can literally be there every single day wow. it's, it's your room right here in the uk i don't know if i, I don't know if it's, it just happened to be the the, the 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 rehearsal rooms we went to but it was pretty much about 45 quid every single session we yeah. went to for like yeah, three yeah, four yeah. hours yeah. for like yeah. three four hours and and we just realized we're not really making like with the shows we're doing they're not giving us any money Mm -hmm. And it's not like we can justify keep going to the rehearsal spaces right. because we're literally just gonna go broke in about three more rehearsals. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's horrible to say, but part of it is just like pure, uh, like business cost benefit analysis. It's, it's kind of sad to say that like part of your music, like your artistic output, is influenced by that, but that's that's the truth of it, man. Right. Like we were spending a ton of money. In, in rehearsal spaces and when it become obvious that we can, we can probably do like we can probably get the same spirit across and not give a load of money to rehearsal spaces um yeah particularly when we weren't getting paid very often yeah you know, it, it just made total sense so then we started playing we just we started writing this folk folk album uh which at the beginning was a different project because we had the idea the hanging bandits were a, a rock band Mm -hmm. uh, so then we decided to come up with a different uh, like project called right. Satellite Dweller, uh, which was a very short-lived project mm -hmm. because we realized that there was absolutely no sense in dividing the very little audience that we already had. <laughs> okay, because it, it was it was like why why are we gonna like now divide? Like it's hard enough. Right. To, to, to build to audience. manage to build a, 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 a small audience and now we're gonna ask that small audience to like to split, right. to split. Yeah. so we we just we just realized uh after that festival it was like yeah let's let's just let's let's just have an let's just have a full hanging right. on the album and then i think we all we all accepted that mm -hmm. we all came to terms with it yeah. and uh and you know we've lived happily ever after <laughs> that's awesome was yeah. that a difficult transition? Because kind of like how I shared a little bit about my band, it is still a difficult transition for me because people, yeah. especially people in my community, they remember me as the jazz trombone mm -hmm, player, mm -hmm. the big band player, the guy mm -hmm. that was on jazz festivals playing trombone, and now I'm doing something different. So was that kind of a, a transition that you guys had, or was it pretty natural? It's definitely... Um a couple of the songs, you know, that, that were kind of popular off the first album, uh, uh, you know, indie songs, rock songs, whatever you want to call them. Um, it, it, it's, it was weird for a while because there, there were certain people that would come to see us and they want to hear those tunes. And especially if we know they're coming, then we got to play the tunes for them, right? But the effect of playing, like, we don't, we don't do King's Culture anymore. But imagine trying to achieve that sort of sound acoustically. You have to rearrange it quite a lot. Uh, you have to do things differently with it, and it becomes a bit of a different song. Um, and and sometimes you you almost don't, you know, like a, a song for us like "Come Out to the Garden." Uh, we're really fond of it, and I think a lot of people like it. But it like we can do it we can do it as we are now but it doesn't really come across in the same way so i think it was more for certain people who enjoyed us i think they had a little bit of a grim for a while because it's like ah oh, you know we really like hearing come out to the garden and you guys uh you do it but it's very different to how you used to do it you know i understand um 
so little things like that also um but still wholly supportive and in fact, oh yeah 100%. i think a lot of our audience have managed to now kind of see that as something we're not doing so much do you know what i mean and and like some like so the people who say they would like to come out to the garden are now saying they like this song we've made called frontier which is like you know yeah. a very long drawn out folk kind of story song mm. uh, and so it's nice to see people kind of appreciating the change and, and getting to learn the new wow. stuff yeah um, which is wicked yeah of course but one thing that's been interesting for our development with this turning to a folk band is how uncomfortable we kind of still are about folk in general and kind of folk clubs as a culture in this country is very weird because mm-hmm. I think we're all uh, not naive to the fact that we're not like 100% hardcore folkians from our upbringing you know we're a lot mm-hmm. of us like kind of rock music grind mm-hmm. music hip-hop jazz yeah. mm-hmm. uh, and we bring that in our music but right. um, some jazz clubs here um, jazz clubs some folk clubs here can be really quite uh, really? traditional essentially <laughs> and, like okay. you bring down an electric keyboard they're gonna scowl okay, and, I and, and so so mm-hmm. we're still almost finding our folk audience because we don't think it it really is in the traditional history between, of the same sure. genre do you know what I mean? the amount of times that we've been rejected by like somebody saying that is not folk <laughs> that is <laughs> awesome that, like, oh, <laughs> it's like, like sorry it's right. quite fun to, to stir up in people you does know? that need a yeah, yeah 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 that's interesting i never really thought of that i guess maybe folk so you would consider that maybe not the culture is it as accepting um, I don't know. Maybe we just maybe we, we just haven't tapped into the right. Just not going to the right places. places. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> not traditional yeah, folk. Is there's the there's line, something but... out there. You know, there's there's something yes. for everything. I think that's been invented. I mean, look at all the weird that humans do. Um, <laughs> so there's definitely something out there for like alternative folk. We just right. it's just almost like there hasn't existed much of this thing in the past yeah right. you, so you're kind of trying to find like we're, we're, we're quite good friends with this old outfit um called morby jones and some of those are like um they they grew up kind of playing alongside fairport convention and um, mm-hmm. which is a really big folk act from the uk and stuff like that and they're a little bit more understanding because they were kind of more hippie as well okay. um so kind of open that was when like England was going through quite a psychedelic revelation back then, right. 60s, kind of 70s. Yeah. And that side of folk um, is definitely still around. Yeah. But it's like very underground in like weird festivals, not weird festivals, great festivals, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Weird, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you make a great point. It's, there, there's almost like two traditions of folk that have diverged, right? And one, one is a very traditional uh, version of folk where there's like a strong emphasis on preserving songs as they were played you know maybe two three hundred years ago uh, and then then there's the folk tradition which which uh, has its origins in the same place but which diverted and was filtered through uh, you know like like 60s pop music and psychedelia um, and we, we're kind of a more natural fit with that side of things and I think the traditional uh, the traditional Community has a very, very different attitude as to what um, what they what what resonates with them as folk music Fair is very enough. different. Well, this has been awesome, and we've been talking for a while, so I'm going to do our last couple of closing questions awesome. here because there's two nice. closing questions I ask all the artists. So okay. Where do you see the Hanging Bandits in five years? What do you guys see yourselves doing kind of music? What your aspirations are for where you want to be playing and whatnot. I see the band in two five years, um, having managed to establish our name around the national range uh, and uh, across, you know, the UK at least. Audience. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hopefully, we we will have you know <clears throat> become you know people will have become aware of us. And also, uh, at that point, uh, I, we will have also been familiar around the States too. Definitely, I definitely would like to oh, be man, around the States in five years, yes, if not yeah, earlier, travel to other places, knowing that we have managed to make a bit of an impression around our own country. Well, their own country. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think like there's, there's a couple of ways that I think about this. So one is there's specific artistic achievements in terms of like what, what I think we want to do musically. So there's two more EPs we want to put out. There's a concept album 
which is kind of what kicked off the whole folk thing for us. And there's an, another album that he's going to be revisiting. It's going to be some new stuff, but also revisiting some of the older material that we never managed to put out. Uh, but then, in, like, uh, in terms of audience and stuff, I think um, we're in a strange time for music where, where basically the old... Uh, uh, the old systems for music getting out and about are pretty much dead, especially for uh, artists of, of certain backgrounds and genres, right? So that being the case, five years from now, what I'd, what I'd like to have happened is I would like new systems to, to have popped up, wh- wh- whatever um, they may look like. I suspect they're going to be more localized in a way where you're going to have artists who are like like huge in like one quite small area and then little by little they'll spread out but these are gonna be people who who make a living but probably don't even appear on spotify like nowhere in the top 500 you know i think this is going to be something we're going to see um and and then you know also branching out what we do we want to do obviously music is the core of what we do but we want to look at doing some other types of content as well maybe doing some uh you know some videos and stuff like that i think for me i would like to see and we've already mentioned the travel thing but i would like to see us just go to different places and play our music in in other cultures and things like that and see how see how that would go down obviously it's all going to be random who to, who's interested in what but i think it'd be really interesting to see to play to like a chinese audience or just all these kind of things and travel and and do that as a band would be because we're all we all like traveling for the most part or mm. we're interested in other cultures and history and things like that so for me that would be awesome to be able to to get to the point where we can do that with you know and have it not like financially cripple us <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's, the, that's the reality yeah, for sure yeah, um, absolutely. yeah. so if that would be amazing can, if we can play in a venue for an hour and that gets us like a hotel somewhere somewhere cool yeah. and obscure yes. for a night wicked wicked <laughs> say yes if you were nice. to describe the hanging bandits to someone how would you describe it <clears throat> <clears throat> Um, I think I usually go with alternative indie Brit folk rock post Post. sorry post Post alternative Brit pop folk Um, yeah I'm that (laughs) no okay seriously uh, I mean it's so hard to describe your own stuff I think uh, I think I think they're, they're they're folk songs or they're pop songs about working class lives working class life working class life could be boring sometimes both listen they come <laughs> hand in hand you know cool. um but yeah <laughs> i was gonna combine that too i was just gonna cut it real quick i was gonna combine that too i forgot to ask you earlier what does the name hangy bandits mean Cause that's interesting mm-hmm. i'm sure there's a story behind that. Oh. it's gotta be <laughs> Well, the story name? the story was that our <laughs> original name just didn't cut it, really. It was original <laughs> original Kamikaze Luddites. Oh, yeah. This yeah, is we, the best name we've ever had, in my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> we, were, we were the Kamikaze Luddites. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Luddites, but... Uh, <clears throat> it's a good movement. We need it more than that. Yeah. <laughs> so, basically, everybody's reaction was what? <laughs> so, so... Yeah, yeah like, literally, they... The words are so weird, they didn't even hear them as words. They just heard like a bunch of sounds. Right. And we're like, oh, you're the kamikaze and whatever. <laughs> yeah, no. like I hear the kamikaze <laughs> part, but we're just the Luddites part. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so um, so Luddites, what, they're like, uh, they're like the like anti-technology movement. Okay. okay. This was like in the Industrial Revolution, uh, The th- these were the people that were... Uh, uh, destroying the the uh, what machinery. do you call them the what machinery the machinery yeah, yeah I they, mean, they would they we're, would... we're kind of seeing this repeat now right these were people who they they made their living like weaving on a wheel and okay. then some dude invented like a weaving wheel that was mechanic and they were like well dude that's my job gone so they smashed <laughs> the mechanical weaving wheel and that was luddites or at least that was the extreme right. luddites 
Wow. Um, but, and so the hanging bandits, yeah. So no one, no one knew what the hell we were saying. It's kind of like a weird, elaborate rage against the machine. Yeah. Of it's like yeah. try putting that in Google. You know, it's like yeah. it'll be the first thing that comes up if you can figure out what to put in. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, so one of the, like successes of our name has been that it's super googleable we're the only hanging bandits we're really easy to find um the, the meaning of the name um i know i think i like i it's like darkly satirical right i think it evokes a mental image of bandits who have been hanged right but obviously the the grammar if you look at the name hanging bandits really means like bandits hanging out the right. bandits who are hanging out they creates this kind of dissonance because you have that. this like mental image of a double hanging bandits yeah right cool. so so that was yeah. and if you want to exercise your uh your 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 if you want to exercise your your grammatical you know uh, muscle you could you could argue that you know you could also take it as the bandits that hang other people yeah, wow. so it's, okay. yeah, 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 it's just yeah. like it's just a nice playful That's playful really name cool. really like and it really relates to like the the, the fact like the way i would the, the way i would describe our band to somebody else is a band that really focuses on on singing you know words that you know that are a bit different you know not the usual uh, and and it, like you can take the songs in different ways right and like the name you can take it in different ways i kind of know how i suspect people like uh hear the name mm. but like sunny says there's a couple of different ways you can take the name and to, and to us well to me at least i think of it as bandits hanging out sunny has that other interpretation of it so i think that's kind of reflective of what we do with our that's songs cool. yeah. i like that we did, really we cool. did. it's just playful thoughtful music and this right. sounds extremely arrogant, but it, it's kind of what it is. That's awesome. uh, we did have a long list of names though before, like. <laughs> band. Yeah. What were some we of those? We went to gigs like experimenting with band names. Oh, like, in uh, Harrison Ford. In yeah, Harrison Ford. Ford. Oh, that was my yeah. favorite. That was my favorite. I, I really liked Inside Harrison Ford. Inside Chris. Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> You know, the, the thing is, at the end of the set, you say, thank you, we've been inside Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, you two, this has been our interview with the Hanging Bandits. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Thanks, Taylor. Pleasure. This, that was the time difference is probably crazy right now. It's probably, what is it, 11 o'clock right now, close to it? So, almost midnight. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, is it, man? Yeah, it's cool. It's, it's been a lot of fun, man. Yeah, man. Uh, absolutely. That's yeah, awesome. Man. So, all the Hanging Bandits fans, all the Power by Vibes viewers, to everybody watching at home, love what you do. <laughs> I enjoy getting a chance to meet chat with the Hanging Bandits. I hope that all of you did too. And I will see you on the next <laughs> review. <laughs>